scenario number two is actually if the bill, the MPs in their wisdom decide that we shelve it. And Honorable Speaker, if the status quo remains that we pass the bill as proposed by the Honorable Kemani Kuria and the committee, the appropriations bill passes as it is, Honorable Speaker, as we did last week. However, Honorable Speaker, it is important for members to note that in case there is a downfall in terms of the revenues by the proposed 200 billion that was to be raised in the finance bill, Honorable Speaker, then the government and the National Treasury and the Budget Committee is also prepared for that scenario. And I have communication, Honorable Speaker, from the National Treasury from the proposals. And I wish that I read some of them that if the bill does not pass, Honorable Speaker, we'll be reducing the budget for the State House for 51 million, budget at the State uh, uh, Office of the President for 51 million, security organs, defense, for example, will be hosting 7.75 billion. Ongoing events in our constituencies will have to shelve that ambition by reducing by 800 million, Honorable Speaker. Higher Education Loans Board will be losing 3.2 billion. Honorable Speaker, the JSS teachers, 46,000 of them, Honorable Speaker, by letting this bill pass, will actually be giving jobs at the permanent and pensionable. And Honorable Speaker, if the wisdom of this House is to shelve that decision, then it means the JSS teachers, whom Honorable Speaker, I would persuade this House that we confirm there will be no funding. NGCDF will be reducing by 15 billion shillings, which is 50 million per constituency, Honorable Speaker. The monies we appropriated for electricity, 50 million per constituency, Honorable Speaker, by again not giving the National Treasury the power for more revenue raising measures, the 50 million per constituency will be disappearing today, Honorable Speaker. Coffee Cherryford will be cut 1 billion, Honorable Speaker, if there is no funding, Honorable Speaker, through the finance bill. Our last plea is this this letter is public information. It can be shared to the members of parliament. Honorable Speaker, my plea is this, as the chairman of budget, that if it's possible, the House Business Committee can actually bring the appropriations bill this afternoon. That the decision that we take in the finance bill, we can also cascade the same by appropriating the, the proposed cuts in the appropriation bill so that we can finish the entire business today, Honorable Speaker. However, however, Honorable Speaker, I am sure with the same energy that you are speaking either for or against. We will also explain to Kenyans, the JSS teachers, I am sure those who will be voting against their uh, confirmation to PNP, we will also explain to them, Honorable Speaker. Those voting against increment in CDF will also be, Honorable Speaker, explaining to Kenyans about it. Those who will be voting against the increment, Honorable Speaker, of employing 20,000 more teachers will have an ample time to explain to uh, the teachers of this country, Honorable Speaker. And Honorable Speaker, the proposed cut in terms of roads is 15 billion. Those who will be voting against the increment of 15 billion to roads, I am sure they'll eloquently explain to Kenyans about it as Honorable Speaker. A minute to finish. Order. O Honorable Speaker. Order. On. Order, Honorable Members. Order. Order. Give him three minutes and wind up. Honorable Speaker, I want to be very objective. Honorable Speaker, these are the proposed cuts in case there is no revenue raising measures as proposed by Honorable Kimani Kuria. Honorable Speaker, number one. As I said, I want to be, to be very clear. State House has been cut money 500 million. Office of the President, another 500 million. Security like defense is 7.75 billion cuts. Honorable Speaker, the same. We have already promised our JSS teachers that uh, the 46,000 of them will be employed and on permanent and pensionable. Honorable Speaker, if we don't give the National Treasury the power for revenue raising measures, it means the people will be voting against 
the confirmation of the 46,000 interns will have up to time to explain to them how they voted against them getting permanent jobs, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, the reduction in NGCDF is 15 billion shillings. That is a small figure, Honorable Speaker, because I can see members are saying 50 million is not much. In Kiharo, it's a lot of money, Honorable Speaker, that every constituency will be cut 50 million shillings starting, starting, starting uh, July, Honorable Speaker. GAF, GAF, we just added them half a billion. Honorable Speaker, the proposal is to reverse the 500 million and also to reduce further by an extra 1 billion, Honorable Speaker. The money we appropriated for electricity, 50 million per constituency, Honorable Speaker. I hope those who will be voting against electrification in our villages will have time to explain to Kenyans why they are voting against electricity in our rural areas, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, there is a proposed Order. reduction. Order. Honorable Commissioner Mishi, I know you differently. Order. Order, honorable members. Order. Order, honorable members, on both sides of the house. Order. Order. Honorable members on both sides of the house. In the tradition of parliament, if you approve of something, you thumb your feet. You don't wail and shout as if you are in a rally. This is not a rally. This is a house of parliament. Dindi, can you wind up? Honorable Speaker, the other thing is that there is a proposed reduction of one billion shillings in livestock restocking. From our side, we believe those who lost their livestock deserve to be compensated. Those who will vote against one billion that is going to livestock restocking will explain to our uh, pastoral this Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, also, the money proposed for reduction for school feeding program is 1.8 billion. On our side, we believe the 1.8 billion is needed to feed the children of this country as they go to our schools, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, the political parties, we can all agree in unison. We are proposing a cut of 900 million. I know that is not contentious. We can agree to cut it this afternoon, Honorable Speaker, because we are also uh, prepared for it. Honorable Speaker, there is a proposed cut of 5.5 billion shillings for cash transfer. Our parents who registered last year deserve to get their cash transfer. Order, time up. Bed Simba. Order. Uh, Asante sana, Rosa Buyu, you have already spoken on this bill. You have no business doing what you are doing. Asante sana, Mwishimua Speaker. Kunipa fursa na mini weze kuzungumzia kuhusu msuada huu wa fedha. Mimi nimesimama kupinga msuada huu. Na kitu ntasema hapa, viongozi, mwishimu malalamishi ya mama tako ya wananchi. Mwisikize vilio wa wananchi. Kuongeza ushuru wa mafuta, kutapandisha kila bidha ambayo inausiana na mafuta. Kwa hivyo hii ni shughuli ambayo haifai kwa sababu gharama za maisha zitakuwa juu. Kukuweka ushuru kwa bidha zinazotoka ngambo. Zitamrudia tena mwananchi kwa sababu bidha zinazotengezwa hapa nchini, bado haziwezi kukimu mahitaji yetu. Mpaka tutashukua tena kutoka kule zile za ngambo. Mbo zitaleta shida zaidi. Kwanza tutengeneze viwanja vetu kabla tutiaweka ushuru huo. Na kuhusu kwamba fedha zitatoka wapi Wapunguze matumizi katika ofisi za serikali Wanaweka pesa nyingi kudumia wageni wakija Kama mgeni amekuja mpe maji ya kunwe Na kama ni lazima akai paka mchana mpe kitheri Mwambia hiyo ndiyo chakula chetu chakitamaduni Sio kukula makuku na madino kwa karama za wananchi Mnaleta paka tu katika sehemu zenu Kupandisha bei ya mikate eh, Mwananchi ya kawida ni bidhaa ambayo inatumika kwa kila boma Kila boma subu inajiona tumia mikate. Weo naenda kuongeza ushuru wa mkate. Na mkifanya hivyo tutakunwa chai na mgoka kama ndio mnataka hivyo. Kwa hivyo mweshimua speaker ni kwamba serikali punguze hile matumizi amba wawo wanafanya. Wapunguze safari wanazo kuenda inje. Waende mahali kiuwa ni muhimu na ni watu wawili pekea. Kapana kuenda watu salasini alafu mnasema wananchi wongeza ushuru na huku mmechukua ndege nzima mnaenda na huko inje. Muna kuenda maoteli, muna zungumza mbao mikutano, muna weza fanya katika bodrum zenu. Hiyo ndo siyo ni matatizo. Kwa hivyo mimi nasema, 
kwamba ushuru ama hii hii mswada wa fedha uangushwe huu kwa sababu wananchi wameusoma msione wale watoto wale vijana wameandamana walisoma kwa sababu huu mswada uko katika mitandao wanajua kila kipengee kile kilichoko pale mnaongeza matairi mnaongeza vyombo ambavyo vitapima saratani eh mnaongeza bidhaa ambazo za x-ray ambao tayari matibabu ni gharama na saizi mnaongeza tena itakuwa sahihi watu wanaumia watoto wanajinyonga huko kwa sababu ya, ya depression ambayo hizo uko nazo kwa hivyo mheshimiwa speaker nimesimama kupinga mswada huu asante sana mwengi mtuse <laughs> Thank you Mr Speaker and Mr Speaker No my friends thank you Mr Speaker I wish to make a very brief contribution and my contribution first of all is to debunk some erroneous myths that have been perpetuated in this debate Mr Speaker during this debate a perception has been created that the contestations are know that taxation began 3000 years before Christ actually in the ancient kingdom of Egypt and even as a speaker those of us who are students of history know that taxation began 3000 years before Christ actually in the ancient kingdom of Egypt and even at that time taxation was contentious it has also been said before this house during the government of Kenyatta one during the government of president moi during the government of president kibaki during the government of kenyatta 2 and even now the finance bill has been an annual event and it has never been a smooth sail but something different has happened this year mr speaker during the many times that the finance bill has been presented before parliament a lot of the times the voices of the people have never been factored by either the parliament or by the executive but for the first time in history the voices of the people have been heard and been, have been factored in the report that was presented before this house by the finance committee one of the principles of good governance is responsiveness responsiveness to the wishes of the people and i want to loud the finance committee for being responsive to the wishes of the people of kenya mr speaker politics is a very interesting game on tuesday and if we may be heard in silence mr speaker On Tuesday after we finished our parliamentary group I had a very jovial discussion with some of my friends who are on the other side I had very jovial discussions with some of my friends who are on the other side and they were saying why have you removed everything that we wanted to rely on in the finance bill to do politics and I asked them but you complained about these things and you have been heard and they have been removed and they told me you know the work of opposition is to oppose And now that you have pulled the carpet under our feet we must find something new to hang on i am saying this so that kenyans know that the opposition to the finance bill is majorly inspired by politics it may not be inspired by the content lastly mr speaker is a lawyer i want to say and this would have been able articulated if i may get one minute that the issues that have been complained of have already been overtaken by events they are actually otios finally What is the effect of rejecting the finance bill? The effect of rejecting the finance bill is to resort back to the finance bill of Joseph Oyula. Oh, thank you. Thank you Mr. Speaker for giving me this opportunity. to also contribute to this uh, important bill Mr Speaker I want to start by thanking the finance committee for the work well done it took a long time but they came up with the, a good report Mr Speaker notwithstanding the amendments that were made this uh, bill was a disaster this bill is assuming that the Kenya's Kenyan's uh, tax rate should move to a higher rate regime which is not comfortable for this country at all Mr Speaker 
we should not take ourselves to a higher tax regime which is going to cause stress to our uh, business community and the individuals. The country needs to move slowly towards a higher uh, uh, tax regime. If the country is moved very fast, Mr. Speaker, then we will not uh, balance our budget. Mr. Speaker, we need to make sure that uh, the revenue is raised, yes, but also the tax rate is comfortable to the community of this country. Mr. Speaker, as we go through this bill, Mr. Speaker, let us uh, note that increasing the tax rates does not guarantee raising that money. It has happened in the bill for 2023. We never made it. It's, uh, the chances are that during this uh, uh, period, we may also not make it. So the Treasury should not come up with such a disastrous proposal in the tax rates. It is for this reason, Mr. Speaker, that we are rejecting this bill and I would want the Treasury to take it back and come up with a bill that is balanced, a bill that will ensure the country is raising revenue and a bill that will ensure the people of Kenya are not stressed. This is very important because if we raise the, the tax and uh, we don't raise the, get that money, it will not help the country at all. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Jen Kagiri. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me an opportunity to contribute to this very important bill. Honorable Speaker, allow me to start by congratulating the Finance Committee for listening to Kenyans and honoring their request on the deletion of the taxes that they felt were not, that were punitive on them. Honorable Speaker, I would want to contribute on the clause on the introduction of eco levy on sanitary towels and diapers. Honorable Speaker, I speak as the chairperson of the 47 women representatives. And recently, Honorable Speaker, we had the opportunity of enacting the Education Act of 2016, where we ensured that every uh, student from class 5 to class 8 girls receive their sanitary towels. Honorable Speaker, out of the 47 counties, only four local manufacturers were given the opportunity to supply these sanitary towels. Honorable Speaker, this prominent house has been treated to a lot of drama and uh, untruthful stories of the situation we find ourselves with sanitary towels. Allow me, Honorable Speaker, to state that this levy has been introduced so that we encourage our local production and our local manufacturers, Honorable Speaker. I hear some members say that we will have uh, low supply because we don't have enough manufacturers. Honorable Speaker, I have had conversations with our manufacturers who are able to produce enough sanitary towels for us. Honorable Speaker, a visit to the supermarkets made me learn that sanitary towels that are man locally manufactured are cheaper than those that are imported. Honorable Speaker, we cannot allow importers to continue making unscrupulous profits on Kenyans here, yet they pay no excise on their products and the local manufacturers have to pay VAT on their raw materials. Honorable Speaker, I stand to support this bill and I stand to support the equal levy be charged on sanitary towels and diapers to ensure that we grow our local manufacturers. A local manufacturer told me he used to have 600 employees. He has reduced them to 100 because of idle capacity. Honorable Speaker, it is our time to stop speaking from uh, both sides of our mouths. If we want to create employment, we cannot be the defenders of importers. Anybody who wants to import can come set up the industry locally, and that's where we are going to give them all the business that they need. And if they lack a place to go and uh, establish their industries, I'm gladly welcoming them to Laikipia County, where they can come and set up a manufacturing industry, and we will not charge them any duty as long as they are producing diapers and sanitary towels locally within our country. Honorable Speaker, allow me to conclude by saying, you are, uh, Honorable Speaker, allow me to conclude by saying, I'm speaking as a user of sanitary towels, as well as a mother to a toddler who uses diapers. So, Honorable Speaker, anybody telling us about imported diaper, uh, sanitary towels, they range from the price of 75 shillings to around 175 shillings. Locally produced uh, sanitary towels are ranging between 55 shillings and 75 shillings.
Ando no Roach. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, from the very onset, allow me to say that I rise to oppose this bill. Honorable Speaker, the Finance Bill 2023, I mean 2024 2025, has redefined our public discourse on things that affect us, especially on the question of how, when, what, and where to tax the people of Kenya. I want to take this opportunity to thank our Generation Z because they have reminded us of what is stated under Article 2 and how we, as this legislative house, the executive and judiciary, arrive at the positions in which we arrive. Honorable Speaker, this generation in their public discourse on the question of the finance bill has reminded us that the sovereign power actually belongs to them. All this power... ...what the people in the Generation Z have told us. I have two points to advance, especially because of the time that we have. Let me talk about tax administration. Honorable Speaker, a misrepresentation has been made in this administration and in the last two finance bills that the more tax you levy, the more yield you will get in terms of revenue. Nothing can be further from the truth. There is a big revenue shortfall from the 2023-2024 financial year in terms of tax revenue. Honorable Speaker, the policy underpinning the revenue or tax collection in this country and especially this administration is wanting. There is very little that has been said in terms of what measures that have been put in place to seal the loopholes on corruption which would lead to higher yields as opposed to imposing more taxes and taxes on every issue. Honorable Speaker, I also want to speak on the policy disconnect of the better uh, agenda of this government. I sit in the Trade Committee and on the two places where you can get more employment for the youth in this country, in ICT, digital economy, they have levied taxes. They have now come with the position that we have listened to you Kenyans. We have listened, we have reduced bread, we have reduced eco levy, we have reduced this and we have reduced this tax. The fact of the matter is that this was a long con. The real bill is what is in the report. Member for Manyata. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I want uh, Honorable Speaker to draw the House and the public in the Constitution of Kenya, Article 10, read together with Article 118, Honorable Speaker, the national values and principles of governance, and Honorable Speaker, public access to information and participation, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, let me say that the conversation around the finance bill has actually uh, given this House and the leaders in various parastatos, including the Treasury, a wake-up call. Honorable Speaker, from the onset, there is a need to engage Kenyans in the process of formation of the finance bill. And Honorable Speaker, the good ideas and the bad ideas in this finance bill, Honorable Speaker, shouldn't have gotten to this House without engagement by the public, Honorable Speaker, from the onset and from the formation of this bill, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, we have made it even more difficult to the Chairman Finance Committee, my brother Kemani Kuria. He has have had it so rough for the few weeks because he had to explain what the thoughts of the Treasury Department of this country from a point of his own logic, Honorable Speaker. And I want to call upon the Ministry to change tactic.
And also, maybe Honorable Speaker, it is the right time to think about how we can empower and entrench permanently issues to do with public participation and public en engagement, Honorable Speaker, in our laws. Because, Honorable Speaker, we need to rethink the public participation laws so that the public can be with us from the onset of formation of our bills moving forward so that we don't have good ideas that are going to have a backlash of Kenyans because of lack of participation, uh, Honorable Speaker. The putative clauses that have found themselves in this bill, Honorable Speaker, the issues of motor vehicle tax, the cooking oil, the airtime, should not have gotten to this bill, Honorable Speaker, where we are today. And I feel it is important we learn from this. Honorable Speaker, where we are as a country, we need to know and show Kenyans that we are cutting costs. Wamboka. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for this opportunity. Uh, from the onset, I want to say I oppose the finance bill for the very reason that we are representatives of the people and the people have spoken. I think over time, Kenyans are losing their cool day by day. As we witnessed on Tuesday, Kenyans and young Kenyans particularly, whom I want to congratulate, were on the street saying that this bill is not good. And there are the people who send us here, Honorable Speaker. So if my people of Bumula constituency have told me that where they sit, they are overburdened and no more burdening, and I should not say no, and they elected me, Mr. Speaker, I must go by what they say. The committee in its report proposes to increase the road maintenance levy from 18 shillings to 25 per litre for all petroleum fuels. If this proposal passes, it will directly increase price of fuel by about 7 shillings, Mr. Speaker. However, this proposal may not be effective. One, you want to, you want to, to tell border borders that you are our people. You are the people on the ground. You are the people we wanted to lift from bottom up. At the same time, you now want to, them to buy the same fuel at a higher price. How are they going to manage? And I want to tell the chairman of this committee that when people are overburdened, they cannot afford these taxes. You must review the 2023-24 uh, finance bill and you realize that you did not achieve what you wanted because it's too expensive for ordinary Kenyans. So you will still not hit your target because you are overburdening these people. Mr. Speaker, our constitution talks of public participation. The chairman introduced this as an afterthought, meaning he has not subjected this to public participation. On behalf of Mamamboga, on behalf of Boda Boda, on behalf of people who cannot afford their living, Mr. Speaker, we say no. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I oppose. Member for Molo, Joro Sore. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for granting me this opportunity for me to contribute to this important uh, financial bill. Mr. Speaker, let me start first by appreciating uh, what the Chairman uh, Finance and Budget have done with their teams. And uh, Madam Speaker, allow me to say that uh, Kenyans had cried so much, even in my constituency had gotten a lot of people making requests for us to do different amendments 
in relation with the bread, the issues of the motorcycle, motorbikes, motorcycles, cooking oils, pants, and so many other issues. And therefore, Madam Speaker, I'm just standing to support this finance bill because the committee and the members of this parliament have heard the cries of the members of this uh, country. Therefore, Madam Speaker, still on that point, we cannot sit here in this parliament and forget that we are the representatives of the people and our people needs a lot of support in different sectors. Madam Speaker, in this finance bill, we are getting each constituency in this country 50 million Kenya shillings in relation with electricity matters. It is in the same finance bill, Madam Speaker, that we are also adding 401 billion Kenya shillings to the county for development. Madam Speaker, in the same finance bill, we are here also to appreciate that we have gotten addition in the CDF. Also, the GAF team has gotten uh, addition. And uh, Madam Speaker, it is on this finance bill, which is also we are gaining a lot, that even our 46,000, our JSS teachers, they will be confirmed. And then, Madam Speaker, in relation also with this finance bill, it is good also to appreciate that in this country we have a lot of roads which are destroyed. Every time we are camping in the office of the CS Murkomen, and therefore we, when we are getting funding through for our roads, and the Madam Speaker, on that point, some of, that of us, we have projects which are stored in our respective constituencies. Therefore, Madam Speaker, we are supporting this bill, which also caters for our elderly, which also caters for matters of uh, farmers and very many things in this country. Therefore, Madam Speaker, we stand here as members of parliament also to remember that it is good to be honest as members and it is good also to guide our people and we elected members of parliament to give the good direction to our people. Therefore, Madam Speaker, whoever is rejecting this finance bill is against the will of Kenyans. Kenyans want development. We have heard the cries of Kenyans and Madam Speaker, we have done the right amendment. And your time is up. Honorable Muliungi, Mwingi Central. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I am directed by the people of Mwingi Central and uh, the youth in general to reject this bill. Madam Speaker, I therefore rise to oppose. Madam Speaker, this bill is uh, not only punitive but uh, re retrogressive. Madam Speaker, the amendments were meant to wink Kenyans because in the first instance, why did you put tax on bread? Why did you put tax on diapers? Why did you put tax on cooking oil? These are essentials. Why did you put tax on m -Pesa? Why did you ta put tax on border border? Madam Speaker, I'm very disturbed by this finance bill, especially because this government is insensitive even to the sick. There is a tax on cancer equipment, which will eventually increase the cost of treatment of cancer. Madam Speaker, the bill in general <coughs> intends to increase taxation, which eventually will increase the cost of living. And it will make life harder and make Kenyans uh, poorer. Madam Speaker, we recall that uh, the Kenya Kwanza government promised a bottom-up economic model, taking money to the, to, to the asolas, to the villages, to the poor. But this bill is now taking money from the poor and bringing it back to Nairobi. Madam Speaker, I care for the people of Mwingi, I care for the jobless, I care for the youth, I care for the asolas, I therefore reject the bill, I reject high taxation, I reject, reject high cost of living, I reject poverty, I reject oppression, I condemn.